Today we're going to be installing Mozilla Thunderbird. This is an email client. It's probably the best open source email client that you can get. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. I just Googled Mozilla Thunderbird and thunderbird.net is the official URL. I'm going to click on that. It's going to take me over to the homepage right over here. And you can see that they have a lot of different versions available. It automatically will download the version for Windows since that's what I'm using. Go ahead and click on the download button and it's going to download over here on the corner. We'll go ahead and click on that to open it up and it's going to start installing itself. Here is the setup wizard. We're just going to click on next and we're going to be using the standard option. If you want to click on custom, you'll be given a lot more options. Uh, standard is fine for most users, so that's what I'm going to use. Click on next and I'm going to be using the default folder and it's going to go ahead and install it. So we got a shortcut over here on the desktop and it's going to automatically launch Mozilla right now when I click on finish. So the first thing that it wants to do is set up your email account. Uh, what I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to set up a Google account. Uh, so you're going to want to go ahead and put in your Google email address right here. So as you can see, it's going to automatically detect that you're setting up a Gmail account and it's going to select the email servers for you automatically, which is perfect. That's exactly what you want. It's selected the incoming and outgoing servers, including SSL and the ports. So that's all you need to do with that. You just have to click on done and it's going to jump over to the next window. Now, if you're not using Gmail or Outlook or Yahoo, something that's very common, in that case, what you wanna do is click on the configure manually option. Inside here for mail configuration, for the incoming and outgoing server, you're gonna to need to know the protocol. So it's gonna be either IMAP or POP3. Then you're gonna to need to know the host name, the port and the connection security, whether it's gonna be SSL slash TLS, it's gonna have none start TTLS, or let it auto detect. You're gonna be doing the exact same thing for the outgoing server. Once you have this information entered in and you click on done, you'll be prompted to enter in your password. So you wanna go ahead and make sure that you have your password over there. Okay, so I'm jumping back and I'm setting up a Gmail account. I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue. It's automatically selected the service for me. I'll click on done. And now it's prompting me to sign into my Google account. You wanna make sure up here at the top that in the address bar, you're looking at accounts.google.com. You wanna make sure that you're at the Google URL when you're signing in here. Click on next, and then we'll enter in our password. And my account is successfully created. And now we have the option, you don't have to do this, but you have the option to link other services like your address book and calendar. I'm not gonna be connecting those right now. I'm just gonna click on finish. And uh, if you wanna have news groups or calendars, uh, you can set it as default at this option. Uh, right now, I'm just going to skip the integration. And now we're at the main screen for our email server. You can go ahead and create a new message. This is gonna work exactly how Gmail works, except you're using an application on your desktop with all the conveniences that go along with it. So that's how you do it. That's how you install Thunderbird on a Windows 11 desktop and set up a Gmail account. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please smash the like button. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.